there is a player survey that is making the rounds in the rise of kingdoms community that discusses the possibility of tier six units and a higher city hall level or at the very least a new era in rise of kingdoms and so today we're going to talk about tier six units the implication of a higher city hall level where this information comes from and of course all of my thoughts and opinions on this topic but first what's going on guys cheers now before we jump in if you enjoy these new style topics make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video and consider subscribing because about 68 percent of you guys are not subscribed okay so the rumors of a new era and a higher potential city hall level and a possible introduction of tier six units comes from originally from what I can tell a survey and this was first discussed actually by Ihara I've shouted them out many times here on the channel before I'll try to remember to link their video in the description below but first this survey came out in the Chinese version of rise of kingdoms asking a select few players if they would be interested in in a new era and various other things of that nature and then just a couple of days later Chiskel Gaming posted a video which seems to have shown off an English version of that exact same survey and in his video you can see that it does come from the official Lilith website and so it seems that the developers are actually getting feedback from a small number of players about their interest in a new era in Rise of Kingdoms and what that could potentially mean for the game of course I'll link Chiskel's video in the description below as well while the survey does appear to be legitimate and it does seem to be the case that the devs are actually getting feedback for this type of thing I want to be very clear okay that there is no current news or plans on introducing a new era higher city hall levels tier six units or anything like that this is just a quick mock-up that I made and I can actually just remove it and you'll see I'm just a little clickbait stinker okay but like I said the survey is real and so we're gonna go over some of the questions that the developers are asking a select few players and I wonder if they expected this to actually get leaked I mean they sent it to actual players so it's not like it's a leak but I don't think they really expected it to go out to like the entire community I mean once Chesco covers it I mean that's that's it right now now everyone's covering it so anyway the survey starts off by saying the following questions are about a possible new era slash age and rise of kingdoms question one says after having experienced the stone age bronze age iron age dark age and feudal age in ROK would you be interested in a new sixth age and what they're referring to here of course is the different ages that we've gone through as we've leveled up our city hall okay so you start the game in the stone age then you go bronze iron dark feudal and they're asking would you like a sixth age now this is a very interesting question because it implies that we could potentially be getting more city hall levels right i mean these new ages come with new city hall levels i mean you get the age by hitting a certain city hall and so in this case a new age would imply at least city hall 26 right because i mean we're already 25 and we don't have that new age and so at least 26 would be what they're kind of implying by a new age and i'm gonna be honest here okay would a new age be the end of the world no but a higher city hall level would be the end of the world and i'm going to talk about that in just a minute here so let's move on to the next question it says if you could advance your city to a sixth age what would you like that age to be and so here we could see again they say advance your city so to me it sounds like they would be adding a new city hall level right like you can't advance if we're staying city hall 25 then there wouldn't be an advancement to, to the sixth age right for example i think it's completely possible that they could retroactively add a new age to 25 and then once the update comes into the game then if you're already 25 then you just automatically become the new age right but that wouldn't be I mean maybe I'm reading too much into it but that to me wouldn't be an advancement into a sixth age that would just be we're already kind of here we're just slapping a new name on City Hall 25 right and here we've got a couple of choices modern age enlightenment age gunpowder age industrial age and the Renaissance and in my opinion the only ones that kind of make sense are like Renaissance or maybe gunpowder age, but I wouldn't call it that. I mean, if we think of like sort of a hybrid of the feudal age and like a sort of steampunk era, but more so leaning towards feudal age, like basically just think of the oldest possible flintlock pistol you can think of, right? Like pirates type of thing. I don't think that would be the end of the world. And I don't think it would necessarily break immersion. Like right now it's 
seems to be the case that all of the content in the game kind of ends at about the year 1710 or 1720 something like that so if we advanced it maybe 100 years like 1810 1820 like would that break the game i don't think so from a thematic perspective but again a new city hall level city hall 26 death of the game we'll talk about that in a minute but renaissance i think is close but modern age absolutely not enlightenment age i guess maybe gunpowder just sounds like shit. industrial age sounds like work that sounds like work do i want to play a game where i'm just doing work like no and also modern age like lilith already has warpath which is another sort of city builder game that is like literally modern warfare and so we've already kind of got that from lilith and so i don't see the point in like making rok okay that when it already exists like tanks and shit that's stupid to me so anyway moving on to the next question what aspects of advancing to a new age in rock do you like best i don't want new buildings absolutely not i do not want new units absolutely not improved combat experience could be good but what do you mean improved i think i think there's ways to improve the combat experience without adding a new age like i, I don't know the word improved seems wrong here it, it seems like maybe the word varied combat experience would make more sense new building artwork depends on how they do it but really the aspect of advancing to a new age that i think would be kind of cool is maybe you could add like a, like i said the most primitive firearms that have ever existed like again flintlock like musket sort of george washington type shit. i mean even that would be a little bit too uh, too modern in my opinion but like didn't the ottoman empire have like gunpowder slash firearms and like Mehmed in the game his skill animation already has cannon so like we already have gunpowder really in the game cannon so I don't really know I mean I guess this kind of answers the question like I don't really think I want a new age actually now I think a little bit more about it moving on to the next question if a sixth age were added what aspects of gameplay would you most look forward to changing and again here's the thing like when we go from the stone age to the bronze age dark age feudal age whatever the game the fundamental gameplay of rise of kingdoms doesn't change at all throughout any of that the artwork changes possibly right i mean you go like you could see your your city itself the artwork progressing but the gameplay it's not like it's not like you unlock ranged units at a certain level right like you get them when you hit sock but like you could be city hall 17 or whatever and still get them right there is no actual added gameplay besides a visual overhaul your city gets a little bigger right so you could put more buildings in it you can unlock higher building levels which lets you get more tier units but again the fundamental gameplay open field fighting for example doesn't change from city hall level 1 to 25 you still go out in the world with your units yes you'll have more units at 25 but the gameplay the core gameplay doesn't change and so in this aspect I mean we already do not see a change to gameplay with a new age added really like if we went into a new age then you know that does open the door for more historical figures to be added to the game which I think is fine but I don't think we are in a shortage of historical figures right now right like it's not like they're running out of things to add like there's literally hundreds of historical figures that are not in rise of kingdoms already that don't require the addition of a new age so a new age is not required to add more commanders new units again advancing the ages doesn't give us new units we still have four troop types across the board you just get higher levels and that comes with research and in fact this would be what kills the game in fact if they added new research to your city dead game no I'm not that's not even like an opinion that's a fact I'll, we'll go over it later but every single game that has ever done this is dead now so like that should tell Lilith everything they need to know about whether they should do this or not again new building levels dead game combat again doesn't change at all with new ages anyway so if they were going to change the combat they don't need a new age to do that what areas of human civilization slash history are you most interested in architecture I think is cool historical figures I think are cool weapons and armor I think are cool crafts are in music I mean I think they're fine but as a as a implementation into ROK I don't care like I don't care about crafts art or music in the game even though I think they're cool in real life right gameplay wise architecture historical figures and weapons and armor seem to be the coolest in my opinion what historical culture slash civilizations would you like to see out of the game I definitely want to see Persia I think Babylon would be cool I don't think we've seen any sort of history of Africa at all besides like Egypt or, like the rest of Africa like I don't know South America definitely seems like they're kind of lacking right now in terms of things that you could add to the game so those are some ideas but again none of those require a new age what famous historical landmarks slash buildings would you like to see added to the game I don't really 
care more so i would care about what is their function in the game like what do they do in the game I, like if i said the coliseum like it depends on what it does in the game i don't i don't care if they just put a new building in who cares right it, it, what does it do that's what matters so that's kind of an irrelevant question to me what historical technologies slash inventions are you interested in as it relates to gameplay and rise of kingdoms none of them i think we've got we're fine as a rock player what else would you like the game's development team to focus on i want the devs to focus on the early game experience the new player experience and the transition from early game to end game i think though that i mean and that's all all those three things are kind of all part of the same package that is what would continue to give rise of kingdoms new players and replenish the players that might be leaving and then a graphical overhaul which they've already revealed and talked about in the past so i'm not going to go over that here check out previous videos i've made if you're curious about that i think those two things like would be massive for the game if the game looked better and if it were better for new players free to play players and transitioning players from the early game to the end game that would be massive right the game could be much bigger than it is now tacking more systems onto the end game is just i mean you're, it's just more bloated it's like they all feel kind of parasitic and and just taking away from the experience rather than adding to it right like the game was fine before formations we didn't need formations they didn't actually do anything besides add ranged which didn't need to be a formation it could have been like another troop type or something like that armaments are just rng wheels like that's not even my opinion that's just functionally how they work crystal tech again parasitic there's no strategy there right so like we have all these systems in the game that are all there's already too many systems in the end game so we don't need more of that we need more focus on early game and tr transition period and once you get that right and you give the game a new graphical overhaul then you can look at okay what does the future look like for the end game more kvk stories variety there maybe things like that now the reason that i think ihara and chiskel kind of alluded to adding tier six units or this survey hinting at tier six units of the game is because again if they add a new era that implies a higher city hall level which you know your city hall is the cap and is the ceiling of the levels for the rest of your city and so if your city hall can go up to 26 27 30 so can your academy and if they add more levels to the academy well they'd have to add more to the technology trees right and so you can kind of extrapolate that out and it makes sense that you would come to that conclusion like maybe they're thinking about adding tier six units and so this is the part of the video where i'm going to go over seven reasons why adding new city hall levels and adding more technology including tier six units would actually be the beginning of the death of rise of kingdoms and i know that that sounds dramatic but it's i mean we've seen it dozens and dozens of times it's it shouldn't even be a consideration for the dev team because we've seen it happen so frequently where once you go down that path of moving the goalposts, the game is it dies that, that is the conclusion 100 of the time for every game in the genre that's like okay let's let me i'm getting carried away let's go over bullet point one as to why tier six units and a higher city hall level would kill the game and that is that players will no longer be able to trust any of their progress in the game at all whatsoever this was the big problem when they announced that they were going to add new equipment to the game remember before iconics came out they said hey we're going to add new pieces of equipment and everyone lost their minds because then they were like oh well that like raises the level cap of all the gear and suddenly all the other gear that you've had or built in the past is made useless or is irrelevant or is weaker now or whatever in comparison that was the big problem with that system right is that they would be effectively moving the goalpost and luckily they changed it to add the iconic system and i think the iconic system is actually pretty good because it kind of gives you slow progress over time and i like that and it builds upon pieces you already have which i think is fine but if you add a new higher city hall level and if that brings with it new tiers of units you are effectively moving the goal you're literally moving end game right like you're moving end game however many city hall levels and so suddenly players would wake up one day and no longer be at end game even though they've been there for four years right and if they can do that to something as fundamental and core to the game as your city hall level then they can do it with any system in the game right so removing that safety that players feel in having finally maxed their tech and finally maxing their buildings a lot of players would quit right out of the gate just for that reason they'd be like oh okay well i'm i'm out of here now because you again you can extrapolate that out to what would the next two years of rise of kings look like are we getting city hall 30 are we getting city hall 35 are we getting tier 7 tier 8 units like nobody wants to go down that path nobody literally nobody wants to do that as i mentioned earlier and this is bullet point number two uh, pretty much all the games that have already tried this are dead look at game of war fire age they had over 
50 at the time of their death which i say death technically i think you can still download the game but no one's playing it i think there's over 50 tiers of units now in game of war fire age and it got to the point where they introduced demigods as actual units yes here's the wiki it says demigods are a new set of unit tiers with their own bonuses and research as well as building levels heroes vip levels and power level blah 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 they are able to wipe out any number of tier 1 to 52 units in one hit 1 million demigods is enough to kill units in numbers such as 1 trillion 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 plus units in one hit there are six tiers starting at 100x health attack and defense and so while it's kind of funny to think like oh a million demigods can kill 1 trillion 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 troops in one hit like that sounds funny but this is the logical conclusion of adding more tiers of units right we already know what happens like once you open pandora's box next thing you know tier 7 units tier 8 units tier 9 units tier 53 units demigods you need trillions 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 it's a joke the game is actually a joke and this is why the game's dead but we can use an even more recent example than that a couple of years ago I played a game called Infinity Kingdom here on the channel and I had a ton of fun with the game the graphical style was incredible they added dragons and there was a ton to love about the game I genuinely did enjoy playing that game but when the game launched your city hall level could go up to 40 and there were up to tier 5 units today there are 55 city hall levels and tier 8 units now I played Infinity Kingdom back in 2021 and yeah I mean I mean I don't even have to is there anything else I have to say I mean like the last thing rise of kingdoms should want to be is in the position that infinity kingdom is in and again infinity kingdom was and possibly even still is a good game but they kept moving the goalpost and moving the goalpost and moving the goalpost and it's like at what point do players just say well I'm actually sick of upgrading the same things over and over and over again because tomorrow you might add five more city hall levels and tier nine units let me just throw game of war fire age in there for just for funsies okay so again if rise of kingdoms is considering doing the same thing that these games have done like why they're comparatively dead don't be like them moving on to bullet point number three and this is something that i touched on earlier but new players are already having a bad time okay rise of kingdoms is not an easy game to get into in 2024 because there are almost six years worth of content for players to catch up with adding a new era and increasing the city hall level and adding potentially new tech with that like tier six units would push end game farther away and out of reach for new players who are already struggling to get there so it's completely counterintuitive to what the devs should be focusing on right now which is attracting new players and making that early game experience and transition to end game better than it is now not worse new players already have to worry about getting commanders and getting gear caught up and then on top of that there's the iconic system armament system crystal tech system museum system there's it's just it's they've already got enough to work on too much in fact they have too much to catch up on already so don't move the goalposts just don't do it that's insanity reason number four that tier six units would kill the game is that the resource cost is already prohibitive for open field fighting for example look at the gap in gold cost from tier four to tier five and players already know the tier five units are extremely expensive right now to field with as it is and to train more of okay i'm only showing you siege because i have troops training for the other buildings but it's the same for all troop types the gold cost is insane for tier 5 units and if we saw a comparable jump from tier 5 to tier 6 then 2000 tier 6 units would cost 16 million gold think about that 16 million gold for 2000 units that's it 2000 units that would be the same jump okay so you go from 40k to 800k you multiply it by 10 and then double it that's how you get 800k so if you take 800,000 multiply it by 10 and then double it 16 million no thanks nope people would just quit there's just no they just it's too prohibitive they would just not play the game anymore let's not do let's just not do it bullet point number five is kind of related to bullet point number four and that is that it would make tier four units pretty much irrelevant like right now one of the things that people do to sort of manage their hospital bills is sometimes players will use some tier four units I know that I do that sometimes especially in Kingsland when I'm running low like super low on resources I will mix my units and I'll put like you know 150,000 tier fives fill out the rest with tier fours or 200,000 tier fives and fill out the rest with tier fours and you still kind of pack a punch 
but you can you know save on your hospital bill and so that's what people do and even still some people run full tier fours at the end of kbk because that's all that they have and that's totally fine and it is actually surprisingly doable when you compare the stat difference it's actually not as crazy as you think but if they added tier six you would no longer be able to use tier four in the same way that you don't use tier three today right like people in the end game are only using tier four and tier five because anything below that is so bad it's not worth using and so by adding a sixth tier you're effectively making tier four the new tier three and so tier four would be useless and so your only choices would be the already too expensive tier five and then the absurdly insanely expensive tier six and people just can't do that they just won't they will not play the game in that state bullet point number six is that this would simply increase the gap between free to play players and pay to win players and i think that that is uh self-evident i mean based on what we just said assuming that tier six units cost significantly more even if they don't cost as much as i said they would which based on this logic i think i'm right but even if they costed less than that it's still too expensive for even whale players let alone free to play players and so the whales might have a full army of tier six because that's all they could afford but the free to play players won't okay they might have 10,000 units, right? 50,000 units. That's it. And we've already got enough systems in the game to where the gap between pay to win and free to play. It's not so bad that the game is, you know, I mean, truthfully, the gap between pay to win and free to play isn't so bad. Like, like if the gap was too bad, people wouldn't play the game, right? So, and we've got millions of people playing the game. And so, I mean, the gap definitely exists. Don't get me wrong there. Like, is, is a gap for show. Sure, it's a gap. I just covered Burger's account on the channel. You can go back and check that out, but his account is worth $130,000. At least that's what he spent on it. And so for sure, his account is better than free to play players, like straight up. There's just no competing there, right? He has seven armies of like all crit gear, like GG. So we don't need that type of player to have tier six units. Okay. Like that just ruins everything. And the final point here, bullet point number seven is that, and this is again, going off of the resource cost in order to compensate for that resource cost the meta would be to have more farm accounts and or obtain more resources in suspicious ways right unofficial unorthodox and frowned upon ways now i for one don't want to see that i think again resource cost gold specifically is already very prohibitive in the game and requiring players have 10 farm accounts with tier 6 units would just be insane and I, I that is not a game that i would want to play so with all of that being said that is my two cents about tier 6 units i genuinely think that there is an abundance of data to suggest that adding more city hall levels and more research and thus more tiers of units would actually be legitimately the beginning of the end for the game like i'm not i i love rise of kingdoms and i want it to last forever right like genuinely i do but i think that's the logical conclusion when you extrapolate it out we've seen it time and time again with literally dozens of other games in the same genre they have all fallen they have all become irrelevant more more or less and that is in part because those goal posts were continuing to move and the game got to pay to win and so people just stopped playing and I do not want to see that happen for rise of kingdoms and so therefore while I don't inherently think that a new age would kill the game like again if they just slapped a new age on city hall 25 and we didn't have to do anything we just got a new age would that kill the game no because I, I wouldn't have to do anything I would just log in and things would look a little different right and be fine but like what's the point of that it doesn't like why waste the, the dev time to make that a thing unless you're going to add something with it but we didn't get anything with all the other ages so you don't need to do that to add more does that make sense like if they were just going to slap a new age on city hall 25 and call it something else that wouldn't do anything for me as a player and i don't really care so while that in itself wouldn't ruin the game it's just like why but literally anything beyond that the day that this number gets bigger is the first day that the game starts dying mark my words if it happens which again we've never they didn't say that this is happening but if it happens mark my words that is the first day of the decline of rise of kingdoms period we've seen it time and time again i think i've made it very clear in this video so i'm really hoping that the devs realize that like if dozens of other games couldn't figure out a way to make that sustainable then 
there's no reason to assume that Lilith could do it even though again I think Lilith is extremely talented and they've made a incredible and beautiful game that I've played for almost six years now I love rise of kingdoms and so all of my criticism in this video is just that it's it, I'm hoping to give my feedback on this with as much clarity as I can I love rise of kingdoms and I want to keep playing it for years and so don't do the thing that killed all the other games <laughs> like it's, that's it anyway with that being said guys I would love to hear what you think in the comment section below do you want to see tier six units do you think I'm being dramatic do you think that I'm wrong I would love to hear from people in the comment section below and while you're down there consider dropping a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton of helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace